Hello, Danny Crane. Welcome back to TIS 100. Uh, in today's walkthrough, we're going to look at the interrupt handler. Uh, this one took me a little while to figure out uh, the first time I was going through these puzzles because uh, it asks for something a little different than what we've been asked for before. Uh, we have four different inputs, and what we're looking for is we need to watch when that input changes from a 0 to a 1. And when it does that, we output the value that that particular input was worth. Uh, so 1 is only equal to 1, but 2, 3, and 4 are each worth 2, 3, and 4. Um, uh, but we're only curious about when it changes. Uh, so when it goes from a 0 to a 1, we're going to output that value. But then the next time, if it's still a 1, we don't output it. We're outputting a 4 because the 4 just changed. Uh, but you can see like this one right here, each one of the values is turned on and we're outputting zero because they've all, all been on uh, that time. So uh, now this one actually turned out to be a lot simpler than I thought it was in the beginning because we can actually, the same bit of code in this first one works in this one, this one, and this one. Uh, so once we get it figured out, we've pretty much got it all done. Uh, we're gonna start with our normal start with moving the up into the accumulator. And then we're going to check right here to see if it's a 0 or a 1. So uh, we're going to start a little header. I, don't, I guess I would call it a header. I'm not sure what I would call those. Um, and we're going to jump if it's greater than 0, so a 1. Uh, and we're going to jump down to our 1 header, a uh, uh, little bookmark, I guess you can call it. Uh, now, if it's not equal to 0, we need to output a 0 or rather, if it does equal zero, we need to output a zero down, and then we're just gonna jump back to the start. Now, if it does equal a one, what we want it to do is move a one down, and then it's going to move the up into the accumulator, because we're gonna start the test all over again. Um, now, here's where we're going to uh, check to see if it's equal to zero, so that way it resets our whole little code block here. Um, if it does equal zero, we're going to jump back up to zero. Now, if it's still a one, uh, we need it to simply move the next one back up, and that's it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first move zero down, and then we're going to use JRO minus three. What JRO does is when it comes to that, it's gonna look at the value that you input behind it and it's gonna move the cursor, I guess, up or down that many lines. Uh, so putting a negative three here makes it jump back up to moving the up into the accumulator. So what's gonna happen is when we get a zero, it's gonna move that up into the accumulator it's going to check it. If it's a zero, it's just gonna move a zero down and jump right back up. Once it gets a one, it's gonna output a one, move the up new value into the accumulator, check if it's zero. When it's not zero, if it's still a one, we're gonna output a zero down and it's gonna jump back up to here. Once it hits zero, it's gonna loop back up here and reset the whole thing. Um, and that's basically it. So we can copy that and actually paste those right on over uh, but we're going to make one change. Um, our output that we're going to drop down to here, uh, we're going to change that for each block to be equal to what the input is. Uh, because on the lower blocks, all we're going to have to do is add all these values together. Uh, so over here, we just have to move the up value that it gets to the right. Over here, we're going to have it add the right to what it's getting up here and then send that over here. Uh, this one is going to send its value into this block. It's going to add everything together and then just output that down through the bottom. So right here we just have to do move the up into the accumulator. It's going to add the left and then it's going to move the accumulated value to the right. And then this one's real simple. Uh, we're going to move up to the left and that's all it has to do. Uh, this one, we're gonna move the up into the accumulator. We're gonna add the right, and then we're gonna add the left, and then we're gonna move that value on down. And then all this one has to do is move the up value that it gets down. 
So let's step through that real quick here. Each one of these gets a zero, checks it, outputs a zero to each one of these, and it loops back up. Now we get a one up here and the rest are zero. So it's gonna check it, jumps down, sends that one out. The one gets sent over here, over here, and outputs as a one. Uh, the next one will be a four. Yeah, we got our four waiting right here already, and it'll get sent down. And we can just go ahead and let it play out, and you can see it checks it perfectly. It's kind of cool, you can see it jumping between zeros and ones in the little checkers up there too. Uh, so this actually I think was a little bit better than my first solution. Uh, pretty much smack dab in the middle for everything there. Um, oh yeah, a little bit better here. We got uh, went from 224 cycles to 204 cycles, one less node, and a whole lot less instructions. I actually kind of figured I did the problem wrong the first time. I totally missed this third instruction here. Two interrupts will never change in the same input cycle. And so I did all this extra checking here to figure out uh, which one of these, which one the highest one was when it changed. Um, so. Uh, just in case I was going to get two that changed at the same time, I just totally misread the instruction. This does work. I can click through, and I'm, I'm using the same block of code up here, but I totally over over uh, complicated these bottom segments here and used a lot more space. And you can see the instruction count was way up in the upper end there. So, uh, But I hope this helps, uh, and I'll see you again next time.